Hello and welcome back. You join me as I'm about to go down towards Limehouse. I'm going to go past the Hartford Union Cut for the first time and that will be the farthest south uh, on the Regent's Canal that I've ever been. So I'm really excited. Um, I've seen a couple of videos in the past of that journey um, but there's loads that I still don't know about it so I'm looking forward to discover it. And a bit later on I'll be showing you the progress I've made on the bed. I've also very recently acquired this massive zoom lens for the phone um, and I've been testing it out for a couple of days and I'm really impressed with its uh, capabilities and what it can do. So um, I'm not sure how much I'll be using this in the videos in the future but I'll definitely take some video clips or a couple of pictures with this just to show you. Um, and even if I don't use it for the videos I'll definitely be using it for uh, hobby photography. Right, time to untie and get on our way. just reached Old Ford Lock, which is the furthest lock I've um, operated uh, southbound on the Regent's Canal. Um, after this, on the left hand side, I'll be passing the Hartford Union Cut, which I've gone up every time I've gone this way. I've never gone past that. Um, so for me, these are going to be new waters. Like I said earlier, I'm really quite excited to discover it. The Hartford Union Canal is just over a mile long and connects the Regent's Canal to the River Lee navigation. It's official, this is the furthest I've gone on the Regent's Canal. stopped above Bow Lock um, because I'm not sure that there are moorings further down and I'm not sure that I'll be able to move within the 24 hours that you're allowed to moor in the Limehouse Basin on the visitor moorings. Um, so I think I saw a space behind me um, so I think I'm going to turn around and stay there until I've got a full day to be able to go through the Limehouse Basin and then head up the Lee or turn back on myself. Um, so for today I think that's as far as I'm going to go. I've also just consulted my Nicholson's guide, uh, which doesn't show any moorings until Limehouse. Um, so yeah, I'm going to turn around because I'm not prepared to take the risk that there isn't. And then I won't be able to moor in Limehouse because I can't move tomorrow. I'm not around tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'm going to turn around and find a nice spot over there.
Uh, so I've just found a little spot just, up, just after this bridge um, and I'm going to whack some pins in and then I might walk down to the Thames and see if I can get some nice pictures uh, of boats on the, on the Thames. Uh, before I do that I'll show you the progress I've made on the bed inside. Fully moored up now and as promised I'll show you how far I've got with the bed so far. Also I won't gloss over it, Bramble is very messy right now. Um, this end's sort of clear that I'm building and then there's just a lot of stuff that needs to be put away. Um, but I'm not really worried about that until I've sorted the bed out because there's lots of storage under there or there will be. Right, I've just removed all of those cushions, a couple left over from Bramble's previous owners, and this is what I've done so far. So as you can see, the, um, the first part I did was this bench. I made that solid because that's not going to have any moving parts apart from the top that I'm going to have hinged. Um, it's not perfectly cut yet, but uh, it's roughly sawn into shape. And this is the top of Bramble's old bed. Um, I'm going to include at some point some holes so that air can circulate into the mattress. Left over from the previous bed as well was all of these metal angles um, so that I can fix things in place and uh, yeah I've made everything nice and solid with those. What I've done on this side is stepped it out from the wall slightly so that this side isn't at an angle because when I'm putting the slats on I want them to be nice and straight and I was really excited to be able to put these old cushions there in place to uh, have an idea of what it might look like. I'm not too sure what colour of the cushions I'll go for yet. Right, now that I've shown you all of that, I think I'm going to walk down towards the Thames and uh, see what's what and just have a look. With that view of Canary Wharf, I'm um, going to get the zoom lens out and see what it looks like through that. And this is in normal focus on my phone with the zoom lens. As you can see, it's much improved, the uh, distance at which I can see things in detail. And now when I zoom in fully, in video mode, it gets very shaky because I'm just holding it, I don't have a tripod with me. But uh, you can just see how zoomed in I can get and it's really very good quality considering that this is a smartphone. So I'm finding an alternative route because the towpath is closed due to gas works. This is my first ever view of the Limehouse Basin. I've got a feeling of excitement being here, I don't know why. Look at that boat. I'm now going to walk around until I get the uh, get to the um, the Limehouse Lock. Some of these wide beams are ginormous. No, you aren't seeing things. That is a turtle in the Limehouse Lock. I eventually turned my attention from turtle to Thames.
with the Thames in the background, I will leave it there for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. If you would like to support the channel, you can do so on buymeacoffee.com. There's a link to that in the description. A like, comment and subscribing would be just as good. Um, hopefully next week you'll see a bit more of the bed progress and uh, I might head towards Limehouse and maybe go up the Lee. I'm not too sure what the plans are yet, but um, yeah, see you next week. Mm -hmm.